Well, I've had a bit of cancellation for some work stuff. Um, so that's meant I've been able to pinch a few hours with Dad. Um, come along to the beautiful Sherwood Forest fishery. It's not far from where I live. I haven't been here for years. Um, it's a beautiful day. I'm going to be doing some pole fishing today. Um, there's loads of silver fish in here. Um, I think there's loads of skimmers in here. There are some carp in here as well. I don't know about tench and I assume there's lots of roach as well. I'm going to be fishing with a pole mower this year and I was going to get all my top kits out at home and everything yesterday just to have a look what the elastics are like and, and just kind of get a take a stock of you know what top kits I've got and all that sort of stuff. And I thought where better to do that um, other than just being on the bank and have a day's fishing with it as well. So um, I'm going to be pole fishing today, I'm going to put a couple of lines in. I'm going to fish for anything basically, just for a bit of sport and um, I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm going to go through the pole kit now, make some ground bait up um, and then I'll, I'll talk you through my approach and my rigs when I get on the box. My first job is going to be to mix some ground bait. Today I'm using mill B10 pellets, it's the um, spotted fin. It's a really nice dark mix, it's fine as you can see. I'm going to be using this on its own. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be feeding it in balls on that long pole line. Really, really strong that mix. Really strong fish meal. I'm going to be putting this through a sieve anyway, so I'll probably have to come back to it again in a few minutes once it's soaked that water up. Lovely dark mix, it's strong as well, fine. Binds quite well as well, so that's it. You put that to one side now and have a look at the top kits and stuff now. Now, I haven't brought all the top kits with me today, but I think the ones that I have got are really kind of silverfish and um, island type top kits which are like 6 through to 10 maybe 12 um, well, let's have a look that's part of the reasons why I'm why I'm here today just to take stock of these ok you've all got side pullers in as you'd expect I think about a number 8 might be nice today nicely set it's got a daiquiri connector on there so that seems alright check the ends of it yeah. I think when I'm fishing I think it's only about four feet deep so I'll probably only need top threes anyway. So that's one that's alright. So uh, what's this one? This is a feeding kit, cupping kit. Yep. Yeah. I'll get that out. I'm gonna be feeding my long line with balls of ground bait just to try and pinpoint the fish down on the deck. Those two top kicks exactly the same length, which is good, ideal. That's the top four, I shouldn't shouldn't need that. So I need another top three. That's alright, we're gonna be alright for today anyway. As you can see I've still got the uh, the original Nemesis, brilliant all-round pole. When I first joined Matrix I was asking the lads, you know, it's obviously a great pole for fishing. Um, for silvers and all sorts of fish but I actually went out my way to ask and say look you know what what is it like um, for catching margin fish you know do you have a separate pole for it and every single one of the matrix lads says no we use this pole for everything which was great obviously the MTX range is out now which is a superb range but I just don't fish with a pole enough at the moment to justify having one as you can see <laughs> Plenty of nice, uh, plenty of ground bait on that uh, on those number fours and fives. I'm pretty sure they're from Ireland last September. Not going to be fishing too far out today. Probably about 10 meters, I think. No, certainly no more than that. Okay, so that's everything out. The next bit is I'm going to uh, go through some rigs now, find out how deep it is, then I'll talk you through how I'm going to be uh, how I'm going to be fishing. Just 
still a fan of the old loop to loop method for hook lengths. Fishing a 16. 16 caught bagger, obviously a barber's pattern. And what I've decided to do is I'm just putting the shorter line up first just so I can get an idea of, of the depth because I've got a feeling it's shallower than what I first thought so that rig is basically just a nice little dibber type float there it's got a little bit of paint off the top but that'll be alright um, and I can fish shallow with this what I'm going to do is fish with a nice little slap in bulk like that for some stots and then about 10 centimetres below that that's the up length to a 16 carp bagger all I'm going to do is just put a plummet on now and this will give me an idea of the depth and that way I can select what size or what weight float I'll need on the long line see that's not too deep there but if we go to just off the bottom there but I've got a feeling that once this gets out to about four, three or four meters it's going to be the same depth that's just off the bottom there let's just go a bit further out then let's have a look yeah that's exactly the same depth there so I'll just go out to where I expect to be fishing on the long line It's about two or three inch slightly deeper out there so that means the overall depth is about four foot maybe a little bit less that's good because that means it gives me a good idea of of what um, what weight float I need on that long line now I don't plan on fishing on the bottom of this rig I'm going to fish it slightly to my left so it's going to be um, top kit plus two I think I'm just going to plumb it so I can get an idea. Right, so that's that's just off the bottom. But I'm going to fish it at about half depth. I'm just going to fish for roach. I don't know if there's any hide in this lake or not. But I'm going to build this line up. So that's about half depth. And I can just tap it and slap it and do all sorts of things with that. I'm going to build this line up. Build this line up. So when I go on it, hopefully there's a few fish there waiting. For it. I might even see them swirling, there's lots of small fish here that I've seen topping as well. So that's it, I'm going to leave that as a long line at the moment just to see how it goes and I can shorten that up when I start fishing it. Simple as that, Let's keep the elastic nice and wet and lubricated. Put that on the bottom of the top kit. I can shorten that lot, I mean as you can see that's kind of, don't know what length that is, um, three foot. I can leave it at that if the fish are cagey. If not, I can shorten it right down if I'm missing bites or I want to fish even shallower. But I can only make that decision when I'm fishing and I see what's happening. So I need a rig for my longer line now. Well, there's still loads of small fish topping everywhere and I think they're going to be a bit of a problem for fishing caster or smaller baits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish a way that I haven't fished for a long time. And it's a kind of double bolt rig, just pull this up length on and talk you through the rig, again this is the same, it's about all 12 up length to a 16 cart bagger, loop to loop yeah all I'm going to do, I'm going to fish with a float that's really it's too heavy for the depth that I'm in, but I've done it for a reason um, as you can see it's a wide stem float, there's no wind or anything to contend with as you can see it's flat calm, lovely colour background as well so that red will show up nice um, three, uh, three rubbers on the uh, on the stem obviously just to keep that nice and straight just try and keep that lower um, so you um, that rubber below the body of the float just away so that your line's not cutting into the into your float and damaging the float um, got one in the middle and then a slightly longer one at the bottom that I like to just kind of just overhang it a little bit at the bottom like that as you can see that'll just help stop tangles um, and stops it flipping over as well which can be a problem on some floats and depending on what sort of rubber that you're using you know what sort of silicon maybe dad's got his first fish while I'm talking to you yeah you can see it's only shallow it's probably three four foot deep there he's fishing soft pellet as well don't know what that is it roach rud rud he's got a rud on the pellet there we go um, so that's the the float 
and then coming down I'm just gonna have two bulks like that now they are number six stocks I think they are easy shots the old easy shots that we here uh, used to use um, and what I'm gonna do is that's a real short hook length it's only about three inch maybe hook length and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay that on the deck lay it on the deck like that so that, that bulk is just above the surface all right and then I've got the other bulk there basically the idea is we dot the float down and any because I'd like to think we're targeting skimmers and bream or whatever's in bigger bottom feeding fish that if they suck that bait in rise rise up there we go my dad's in again he's bagging now small fish but they found his pellets um, the idea is when they suck that hook bait in it'll lift those two and therefore that'll create um, a lift bite so that's how I'm going to try and fish it anyway like I say there are small fish there my dad's catching them now so uh, I just want to get this get it down to the deck and hopefully we'll catch some better fish I'm just going to plumb up now this obviously with this kind of rig it's important to get your rig <coughs> um, shot just right but you've also got to make sure that the depth is spot on as well that, that you've actually got it set out because you want it so that that last two inch three inch is laying on the bottom and that bottom bulk is just off the surface uh, sorry off the off the lake bed so let's go and see how deep it is like I said I'm not going to go out too far I can't see any point whatsoever but I want to go out far enough just so it's a nice distance from the bank so that fish will feed comfortably that's number what are we on here I'm just line these sections up here that's on number seven there seven sections of pole let's just have a look what that depth's like there I'll obviously have to cut that line it's too long between float and tip right, so that's just off the bottom so I'll take that section off we don't need that one bit of trial and error but it's important to get it right but, I mean it's always important to get your depth right but obviously with this kind of rig it's even more important it's like when you're fishing a pellet at dead depth it's got to be bang on it's just off bottom now once we get this depth right I can then adjust the line between float and, and tip I don't want to do that until I'm absolutely sure how deep it is. I don't want to, to cut. You don't want to cut it too short, and then there's nothing you can do about it. Then you don't want to start adding line on and all that sort of business. Right, so that's just at the base of the float stem now. Uh, float bristle. What I'm going to do now is because I'm going to be feeding on fishing on the deck. Keep moving the plummet left and right just to make sure it's nice and level where you're going to be feeding you don't want to find out you're on the edge of a slope or a six inch to the right or whatever it's deeper or it, you know it can really interfere with so that's all right left and right just see a carp just under the surface now it's about 18 meters I don't know if you could just make it out its back's just sticking out I'm just going to come back a little bit just to make sure it's the same depth coming back half a meter yep and then do the same going further out So what I need to do now is, so all I'm going to do now is cut the line between the uh, the tip of the float, get that right, and get the depth bang on. Now I'll talk you through the bait. Right then, bait wise, got the ground bait. I went back to that. I had to just put a bit more water with that. Put it through a sieve now. It's lovely and fine, and dark as well. Binds really well, but like I say, it's only three feet deep here, so binding's not a big issue. But I'm going to be putting some worms in as well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish with a mix today. A bit of a mix. I haven't fished like this for quite a while. I've obviously got casters. I've got two pints of casters here. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be feeding caster on the long line. In balls of ground bait. But I'm also going to be loose feeding casters. Five metres to my left over here. Alright, so that's going to be top kit plus two. Just to my left. I can loose feed that with my left hand. 
and I'm going to build that line up whilst I'm fishing on my longer line. I imagine I'm going to be seeing small fish topping there, you know, for uh, possibly boiling for the casters after a while, but I'm just going to build it up, build it up, build it up, and then when I go on it, hopefully there'll be some fish settled on there. Um, so that's two different approaches. Okay, so casters, always keep one half in the bag just in case there's an accident. Get some water in there. Let's make sure there aren't any floaters. Don't want to be feeding casters with floaters in. There's only two or three there, which is great. Okay, that's good. I need to have all that water there, but some of them are a bit semi buoyant. All right, okay, and I've also got some worms. All right, I've got three bags here, but they're not all full. There's worms in it, some of them. There we go. What I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be feeding some pellets as well, some micro pellets. These are nothing special, I don't think. What does that say there? Laugh that says so these are Larford fishery pellets just the first ones that I grabbed out of the van might be two or three years old these to be honest they've been bagged up they should be all right I'm gonna soak these down I'll just give them a a minute or two it's not too important about the consistency of them because I'm going to be feeding them in ground weight so it's not like you're wanting them to to kind of um, you're going to mould them around a method feed or anything like that. I'll do a mix of ground bait, casters, a few pellets and a bit of chopped worm as well, all in one, one mix. All right, and then I can just quickly squeeze that into little balls and I'm going to feed that in nuggets on that long line. I'm not going to um, loose feed on that long line, so I want to encourage the fish to be down on the deck. Plenty of pellets here. Okay. See, they're quite wet anyway, so they're going to add some, some moisture to that ground bait anyway. Right, I'm not going to cut the worms too small, because like I say, I'm hoping to target better fish, alright? I'll just keep them on my side tray there, obviously for the hook, I'm looking at fishing worm on the hook. But what I'm going to do is do a mix now. So what I'm going to try first is a bit trial and error this. Handful of ground bait. Try a handful of casters. Handful of pellets. And a handful of that worm. Alright. So I'm just going to mix that now. And just see what the consistency, sorry, the um, the ratios are like. So I'm not sure if that ratio is going to be right to be fair, but it's very much a guesstimation type thing. As you can see, loads of feed in there. I think it needs a bit more ground bait, so I'm going to try two, two handfuls of ground bait to one of all the others. And just see how that looks. I think that looks much better. If it holds into squeezes into a lovely ball, that will go straight to the deck. There's a few bits of micros in there, obviously for the skimmers. Some casters which are for everything and then worm for any, anything as well but obviously it means I can fish worm on the hook which is a lot more um, a lot more durable. I think that looks great. If I was going to leave this longer, this line, I'm actually going to be starting on this line. If I was going to leave it then I'd probably put a bit more feed in there because I'd want it to you know, be a better bait ready for when I go on it after an hour or whatever it might be. But in this case I'm actually going straight on it so I don't want to put too much feed in because when I go over the top of that with worm on the hook um, I'll be hoping to catch pretty quickly. Tray really nice and simple as you can see. I've got that mix there that I can quickly squeeze into balls for the top kit. I'm going to be putting that in with that's the 150mm um, pole pot cupping kit. So I'm going to be feeding that with that. I've got that tub there which is going to be for the hook, so I can quickly get pieces of worm for the hook. That's there nice and easy. This one's a little bit further back, and that's because I'm left-handed. I can easy when I'm sat that way with the pole, I can easily dip into that one and feed that top kit plus two line to my left nice and easy. Got some spare worms there and loads of micro pellets. The reason why I've done so many pellets is because I might want to up um, the feeding of pellet into there if, if you can hear me over that plane that's above um, because I might want to target more skimmers if small fish are a problem plus I might want to feed down this margin a little bit later on but we'll see what happens, see how the session goes.
got a few fish up just off the bottom now. Um, so I'm gonna have to change this rig. It's obviously warm, the fish are already up in the water. Now I've got a few fish just boiling for those casters now. Now I've been putting them in. They're only small fish. Well there you go, you can see them boiling there. They're obviously small fish, but it just shows that they are up in the water. So I'm gonna change this rig, okay? I'm gonna change it so that I'm no longer over depth. I'm gonna fish just off bottom and I'm gonna spread the weight out a little bit because I'm sure that there's fish in that bottom half to be caught with this same rig so I'm just going to alter the shotting what we'll have to do now is probably take a shot off because obviously the weight of the worm is now going to be on built into the loading capacity of the float now because the worm is on the bottom whereas now it's off the bottom so that's going to be pulling the float down even more so I'm probably going to have to take another shot off but I'll find out that's just dotted now there we go you're a little fish but because you obviously you're at an inch off bottom any slight indication of them just touching the bait, you're going to see it. I love a little skimmer. A bit darker in colour, that one. Beautiful. <coughs> well, as I thought, it is, it's uh, fizzing away now, like a jacuzzi. There's obviously quite a few fish there. I've come off bottom now, about two inch off bottom, still with a piece of worm on the hook. And just by lowering the rig straight down, dotting the float right down and just lifting instead of striking on those little indications. I've just had a really nice run of skimmers. They're all the same size, all up to about eight, eight ounce. The bubbles are just tailing off now. And that's probably because I haven't fed for a while, so they've probably mopped up that last ball of ground bait that I put in and all the freebies that are in there. So all I'll do is top it up again and hopefully we'll get another run of skimmers. There are signs of fish showing on that short line, on that five metre line, where I'm loose feeding casters. Keep seeing the odd swirl, so there are some, there are some fish there. They're probably roach and, and rud. But I'll keep building that up and it'll make a nice change to go on that line just to catch some different species um, and who knows it might throw up one or two surprises I almost dropped that one. I missed a bite. I think it was a liner. Just laid the rig back in again. And took it about two feet down. It's a rud, I think, this one. Yeah, nice little golden rud. Beautiful. Great when you're fishing baits like this and this sort of way, because it's just catch anything sort of fishing. It's something that you know it's easily forgotten about certainly when we feed a fishing for bream all the time sometimes an approach like this you can catch anything that swims again just holding that about a foot off bottom not even really, obviously the float wasn't even in the water. Got a foot off bottom. This time it's a skimmer. Lovely stamp fish, beautiful. Well it's pretty much skimmer cast on that uh, on that longer line. Up in the water, just fluctuating between, you know, on the deck and about a foot off bottom. Loads of skimmers out there, but every single one is just the same size, everything. 
still seeing a few swirls on this left hand swim, five metres. So I think it's time to have a look on that and see what we can catch on that line. Before I come off this line, I'm just going to put another big bowl of feed in, keep the fish out there um, occupied so that if this line doesn't go and I don't catch on it, then obviously I can return to that. And there's still some fish there waiting for me. So I've got a long, a long lash, as they say, between float and elastic. And I'm going to leave that on for the time being, just to see if uh, see what kind of number numbers of fish are, that are actually there. We kick off with a bit of worm. I've only fed caster on that line, as you know, but just a little bit of worm, the same size as a caster, just because it's nice and robust. And just see if there's some fish there. I'm going to have to mess about with this line, I'm sure with regards to the depth that I'm fishing, the way that I'm putting the rig in and the length of line between float and elastic and there we go, fish straight away Let's see what this is keep that line fed put up a bit of a scrap this one I'm trying to get another platform oh, would you believe it? a perch how about that? Shallow fishing. Shallow fishing, first fish is a perch. We never really know what to expect, do we? Just in the corner of his mouth. Nice start. I'll be very surprised if they keep coming. As you know with this rig, I've just got a bulk of um, easy shots there, just at half depth, and it's set at about 18 inch deep. This elastic's a little bit soft, it might need... Uh, Hanging out the elastic, the tip a little bit. I managed to cut that back slightly, but be interesting to see what else we might catch on this line. Well, this is a much better fish. I don't know if there are eyes in here. Just flash then, as I hooked it. I don't know if it is a big eye. Keep that feed going in. Could even be a big skimmer. It's a bream. We're catching bream shallow. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I thought this might throw up a few surprises. There we go. How about that? Caught about a foot deep of a loose fed caster, piece of worm on. See it just hooks, covered in spawning, spawning bumps, nodules, tubicles, whatever you call them, I don't know what you call them, but how about that? Never expected that on the shallow rig. Fantastic. Popping back. Well that's two fish, two drops and two surprises. You'd hope after you know an hour and a half, two hours of building it up that they would be confident. It looks like that's the case at the minute. We'll keep that line nice and long so the pole's not directly over their head. I'm just flicking the rig over. Trying to keep the tip away from that main feed area. I never even had to strike then. Now this could be a third species in three casts. I think it's a rud, which is what you'd probably expect on a place like this. Beautiful golden rud, look at that. Beautiful in the sunshine. Typically feed up in the water. Fantastic. Three drops, three fish, three species.
going to call it a day on that. What a fantastic day. It's been great to all work out with the pole. And like I said, I'm going to be fishing with the pole a lot more this year and filming more videos of my pole fishing on different venues, different species. A bit of a breeze has just come in now, but it's been a lovely day. Absolutely, really enjoy it. Hope you've enjoyed a bit of an insight seeing me fishing with a pole on this sort of venue. Like I said, I'm going to be fishing more venues like this. Pole fishing and waggler fishing as well, as well as obviously feeder fishing. But yeah, it's been a good workout. Um, and um, I can start preparing my kit now for the matches that I've got coming up that are going to involve pole fishing. So, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of them, hit that subscribe button. And um, if you want to see more behind the scenes videos and you want to become a patron, join the club, then just hit that link there and that'll tell you more about it. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.